Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Bukhari that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said on the day of judgment, the people who affirm, the people who affirm with heartfelt conviction that there was no one worthy of worship but Allah will receive the benefits of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's intercession. So this is the importance of the faith in the oneness of Allah. Now, talking about this monotheism, Tawheed, the faith or belief in oneness of Allah, I would want to make it clear that it has three aspects. The three aspects, aspects being oneness in the being of Allah, oneness in the worships of Allah, and third is oneness in the attributes of Allah. Now, I'll be talking about all three of these one after the other. The first is oneness in the being of Allah. This is what Allah clearly announces in Surah Al-Ikhlas. The four verses of Surah Al-Ikhlas, Allah says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَقُلْ لَهُ قُفُوًا أَحَدْ Say, He is Allah, one and only one. Allah, the eternal absolute, he begets not, nor is he begotten, and there is none like unto him. This is actually the belief in oneness of being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qul huwa Allahu ahad is actually the oneness in being. What does it actually mean? That there, there has to be no partners to Allah. The basic concept of this monotheism in being is that the person would believe that Allah has no partners, no wives, no helpers. He doesn't have a spouse, a wife, no offsprings, sons or daughters. So when somebody starts associating the creations of Allah or the creator with him, like worshipping the moon, the sun and the stars, like the people during the prophethood of Asad Ibrahim salam, they had a huge Nanar god, the god of the moon. They had a huge Shamas god, the god of the sun, the sun god. And they used to worship the stars. Then people worshipping idols made of wood or idols made of Idols made of stone, like the people of Mecca, they had they had 360 idols placed in Hanakaba. So this was what? Then worshipping trees, worshipping fire, the fire worshippers like the people in Persia. So this is all associating the creations of Allah with his with the Creator. And then the belief of certain followers of the prophets, like the Jews are the Christians that their prophets were the sons of Allah or they were a part of Allah. As Allah mentions in Surah Tawbah, verse number 30, وَقَالَتِ الْيَخُودُ وَزَيْرِ بْنُ اللَّهِ وَقَالَتِ النَّسَارُ وَقَالَتِ النَّسَارُ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ قَوْلُهُمْ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ The Jews say that Uzair is a son of Allah. And the Christians say that Christ is the son of Allah. This is a saying which just they are saying. And they, they imitate what the unbelievers of the old period used to do. And Allah curse, Allah's curse be on them. How they are deluded away from the truth. So the concept of the Christian community in saying Isa ibn Allah, that Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, na'uzu billah summa na'uzu billah min zalik, was the son of Allah or the concept of Trinity, concept of three gods. And the Jews saying Uzair ibn Allah, that Hazrat Uzair radiallahu ta'ala who was the son of God. Or like the Makkans, they used to believe that the angels are the daughters of Allah. As Allah says in the verse 100 of Surah Al-Anam, 
Allah says, وَجَعْلُوا لِلَّهِ شُرَقَاءَ الْجِنِّ وَخَلَكَهُمْ وَخَرَكُوا لَهُ بَنِينَ وَبَنَاتٍ بِغَيْرِ إِلْمٍ سُحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ عَمَّا يَتِفُونَ They make the jinns equal with Allah. And though Allah has created the jinns, and they falsely have no knowledge, attribute to him sons and daughters, praise and glory be to him, for he is above what they attribute to him. Then making humans or making the creations of Allah as a part of Allah. Allah says in Surah Az-Zuhruf, verse number 15, وَجَعَلُوا لَهُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ جُزْءٌ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَقَفُورٌ مُّبِينَ They attribute to some of his servants as a share with him. Truly is man clearly unthankful. So, I repeat now, if I sum up, what is the faith in oneness of Allah is to think Never, never, ever to associate the creations with Allah. Creations being associated with Allah will be polytheism. And then thinking that the angels are the daughters of Allah will be polytheism. And then thinking that the prophets are the sons of Allah or a part of Allah will be polytheism in, the, in being with Allah. <coughs> the second... The second aspect of oneness of Allah is oneness in worships of Allah. How can we understand this? That when a person embraces Islam and says, La ilaha illallah, then this is actually a pledge of the bondsman. This is actually the covenant to stick on the faith of oneness of Allah. Then when we, when we say, while narrating Surah Tul-Fatiha in our Salah or otherwise, when we say, This is also a pledge which announces that we will worship no one other than Allah. Allah makes us announce and highlight this concept as Allah says in Surah An'am, verse number 162 and 163, قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَالنُّسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ قُلْ سَيْ Announce, tell that all my salah, my sacrifice, my life and death is for the sustainer of the worlds. He has no partners. I am commanded to be the first to submit to his orders. So this is the worship, oneness in worship of Allah. And this is exactly what we have been taught to say when we say in we sit in the tashahud of our salah and we say, At-tahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tawayibat. All my all my verbal, my physical, or my monetary, all my oral, my bodily, or my fiscal worships are for Allah. So now, the concept of Iya Kana Budu is basically in two forms. It actually relates to two forms and states of mind. Number one, that by saying this and by believing and having faith, in the oneness of Allah as worship, we mean what? That we will worship Allah and only Allah, number one. Number two, we will worship only for Allah. We will worship, number one, we will worship only Allah and only Allah. And number two, we will worship only for Allah. Worships can be physical worships like salah, offering salah, fasting, remembrance or zikr, recitation of Quran, migration or hijrah, jihad, and then performing hajj has a component of physical worship as well. And then worships are monetary worships, like paying the zakat and paying charity in the way of Allah, and then, then spending for jihad. And again, I repeat, 
Hajj has a monetary as well as a physical component of worship. And then spiritual worships like the fear of Allah, piety, taqwa, then remembrance, remembrance of Allah or zikr, gratitude to Allah, that is shukr, and then dependence on Allah, reliance and dependence or trust on Allah, that is tawakkul. These are our spiritual worships. Now, all these forms of worships will only be for Allah and of Allah. That is exactly what Allah orders in Surah Fusilat, verse number 37, where Allah says, لا تسجدوا للشمس ولا القمر واسجدوا لله الذي خلق حنا إن كنتم مياه تعبدون Do not prostrate to the sun or to the moon, but prostrate to Allah who has created them. And if it is him you wish to serve. So worshipping for Allah, the Salah will be for Allah. As Allah says in Surah Hajj, verse number 77, Ya rabbakum O believers, you bow down, you prostrate, and you worship your sustainer, and you do good deeds so that you may be their successors. So all the salah, all the fasting, all the performing of hajj and spending of zakat and spending of all forms of charity will be in the path of Allah and for Allah.